We'll just start to you guys. Okay, so we're going to start a new piece, a continuation of the last piece, which actually covers a lot of, he explores even further uh, the measures that we mentioned in the previous piece. In the previous um, uh, uh, entry from the Al Shah Kodesh, we were talking about the, uh, well, we're in the middle of the creation of Chava from the Tzela. And we uh, mentioned the Medrash of Rabbi Vau. And now we're going to turn attention, our attention to the next Pasuk, Perk Pei's Pasuk Chav Gimel. Vayomer Ha'adam, upon HaKadosh Baruch Hu bringing the Isha to the Adam, after presenting her to him, and we talked about the implications of presenting her to him as opposed to how nowadays men and women get together, whereas right, the nature of a man is to be lachzar achrei avodaso, and he has to seek her out. Here, HaKadosh Baruch actually had to present her back to Adam because she was taken from him. So the next Pasuk reads, Vayomer HaAdam, upon receiving Chava, the presentation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of Chava, and the, you know, the Gemara, I believe it's in Sota, beautifully discusses how HaKadosh Baruch Hu adorned her and dressed her up and, and, and made her beautiful with a nice, nice, I mean, she didn't wear a dress because the next Pasuk says that they were naked, but like, you know, imagine all kinds of beautiful adornments in her hair. He, I think it says he braided her hair and he presented her to him. And then it says, Pasuk Chav Gimel, Vayomer ha'adam zos ha'pa'am etzem mi'atzamai uvasar mi'psari. And the Adam said, this time, zos ha'pa'am etzem mi'atzamai, she is bone of my bone. Etzem also means like my essence. Essence from my essence. She is an essence from my essence. Uvasar mi'psari. And she's flesh from my flesh. Lizot, for this, yikare isha, she will be called isha, Ki me ish, because from an ish, lukachazot, this was taken. Okay? So now isha and ish are not spelled the same way. Isha, if you're telling me that she should be called isha because she is an extrapolation of the ish of the man, ish is spelled aleph yud shin, with the yud in between the aleph and the shin, and isha is aleph shin he. Now the he at the end of the word means feminine, it's true, it's just a suffix, a feature of Lashon HaKodesh that if there's a he, it means it's feminine. But the yud in the middle kind of breaks it up. It seems like it's a totally different word, right? The, the ish is an aleph shin with a yud in the middle, and the isha is an aleph and a shin without the yud. And the hey is to make it feminine, seemingly, okay? So the point here is, first on the, on the level of the story, Adam receives Chava and says, you know what? This time, something special, this time she is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and therefore she will be called isha, which will translate to woman, he may ish lukachazos because she was this was taken from man, and and then the next verse says something very interesting. Al came so now the narrator the Torah looks at the reader and says Al came therefore yazov ish es aviv esimo a man will leave his father and his mother vidavak bi ishto and he will cleave to his wife vhayu levasar echad and they will be one flesh. So now remember. Just to reiterate, other Mauritian receives Chava and says that this time there's something special going on. She's a piece of me, and that's why she's going to have a name Isha, because it reflects the fact that she's taken from me. And then the Torah says, and Al Cain, because of this, that's why a man's got to leave his parents in order to cleave to his wife with the goal of becoming one flesh. What is the Torah talking about? Let's see what the Alsha Chakadosh has to say. So we are on page. Mem, 40 in my edition, yeah. and we are on the Perak Beis, Pasuk Chav Kimel, Chav Talet, Vayomer. Okay, Pershuza. They explained, <coughs> the, our, our sages, Zos Hapam, the verse says, this time, Bilvad, seemingly just this time, Etzami Atzami Basarmi Basari, right? Al um, Mishnah is noting that there's something unique about this particular instance in history. Because, I mean, it begs the question, what was the other time? Well, the other times are in the following, meaning not every time that you meet your wife, she's taken out of you. He's saying this time, right? But it, it implies that it happened before. Like no, no, just the opposite. It's saying, Zos ha'pam bilvad. Bilvad means alone. Meaning, why is he making a big deal? He's saying, you know, Zos ha'pam, this ah, time, just this time. She's, my mate has physically been hewn, like been formed from me, right? Which, right? And we know that the rest of the time is not like that. What's the point? Right. And also, what's, what would be the Al-Kain? Because of that, you're going to call her Isha? 
we, and we shouldn't call our wives Isha because they weren't taken from us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Per Shuzal Zosapam, when the verse says this time, Bilvad, alone, Etzam Yatzamai, she is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Ah, however, Acharezo, following this, this is the first time in history, but after this, Loti Yehaisha Etzam Yehadam, no woman that ever um, decides to, you know, to um, live her life with a man will have been from that man, physically. It would seem totally superfluous, like it's not teaching us anything, this phrase. Because what's, what's the significance? It's obvious and it doesn't... What, what, what's, what's the verse coming to teach us? The ode. And further, How does it come out from this? That follows, right? The verse follows, And therefore, the next verse says, Yazov ish, etc. A man should leave his father and his mother to cleave with his wife. What does that have anything to do with the fact that Adam says this time it was different, mm. right? And not only that, but the implications are the nahafuchu should be the opposite. Ki al she'ein zulat Adam Arishon krovim ishem ishto lo yidbak be ishto. That Adam Arishon was in a situation he could not have. He did not have a father and mother to leave and to cleave with his wife. And in fact, his wife right. was not a, a stranger to him. She was actually formed from him. So the verse that says. If it says this time was different, and that's a direct follow with, and that's why a person has to leave his father and his mother, yeah. because aside from Adam Arishan, right, only Adam Marishan, he was actually, he was related to his wife. Everybody else is not related. You have to leave your family, right? Mm. So the fact that he was close with his wife, he shouldn't cleave with mm -hmm. Chavo, or the fact that we're not related to our wives, we should, like, what, what does one have to do with the other, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Amna, however, hine kasavnu lamala, we've explained previously, memra de rabbi abo, the, in the medrash that we just uh, uh, mentioned in the previous verse, right, in the explanation there that rabbi abo in the medrash, shehiksha, he asked, ne'amar khan, it says, by the sixth day of creation, zachar nekeva bara'am, that a kodesh baruch who created them, male and female, distinctly, right? And v'nemer lahalan, and later it says, "Vayivra Hashem Elokim es haAdam," one, right? Not Zachar and Akiva, two separate entities, one, but rather in this telling, it's reversed. They start off as one, and then later on, she's fashioned from him, right? So he asks, right? The basic contradiction in one telling of the story, it sounds like they were independent, and in the second story, it sounds like she was formed from him. Ela mitchila initially, Allah b'machshava. Uh, it was, it occurred in thought to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Livro HaTshneihem, to make them both, create them as distinct entities. The Achakach, but afterwards, Lo Bara Ela Et Adam. God, in actuality, in the world of deed, he created them as one entity called Adam. Kamfarash B'Samuch, like we've explained um, in the, in the, in the um, comments nearby. The Kasavno, and we wrote, how could it say over there that he created them? And then, Adam, and he called their names, meaning they, they uh, existed distinctly, Adam, the name of Adam. How can you say that those comments only refer, according to Rabbi Bo, in Machshava, when it describes them as if God actually did it? Right? The word Bra'am means God made them, right? He created them. And right, Zachar um, Nekeva. And Rabbi Vo is saying that that Braam, that's not literal, that's just on the level of Machshava. So we asked, how could that be? Elisha'in Safek, rather, there is no doubt, Ki Machshavto Yitbarach Oserosha. Indeed, what God thought, what occurred to him in thought, absolutely makes a, an impact on reality. It's just on the reality on the level of thought. The Hiknebam, and through them, uh, um, they acquired Havaya Daka Shal Zachar Vishal Nekeva Min Haadama. So, Vihik uh, Nebam, and he gave to them an acquiring, he bequeathed to them Havaya Daka, a slight existence, Shal Zachar Vishal Nekeva, a distinctly one of male and the other female, Min Haadama, from the earth, Ela Shebir. But rather that they were creations that would, they would not, on that level, they would not have the ability to cleave together because they were created separate. In their cre being created, nifradim, separate. Alkein, therefore, barata zachar levado bemaaseh. So then when it came to the creation on the level of maaseh, he created them as one, as in the body of a zachar. 
ואותה and her הבחינה של נקבה, the aspect of נקבה, שנתהווית במחשבה, that was all cre- already created on the level of thought, נתנה באדם, he invested within אדם, the male part that had a form, בכוח, in potential, בצלה, on his, in the side. ועל הבחינה ההיא, this is exactly how he explained it in the previous uh, piece. והבחינה ההיא, and on that aspect, meaning the latent feminine uh, uh, being that was in the tzela, which was incorporated in man's physical form, right? She'im hazachar, that was with the male, she'hi bepol, who is already on the level of active, he's not just on the level of koach, of potential, nikru shnehem adam. Then on the level of dibor, on the level of speech, God called both of them adam. So now, there's, like we said before, on the level of machshava, they're separate, they were conceived of as separate, but on the level of ma'aseh, and on, of deed, and on the level of dibor, of speech, they are unified together by God calling them both a name with speech. He's unifying them together in Adam, the name Adam, and, and because she had to be extracted from him to get a body on the level of, of body, which uh, occurs on the level of, of action, they are also, they share something. They had an experience where they're they shared, which allows them, both those aspects allow them to unify on the level of speech and action. Okay? Kime Adama Hema, they are both hewn out of the same ingredients, Adama. Nimtza, it turns out, Vekut Mukhrach, an absolute um, uh, cleaving, Mitzad Hatzela Shalom, that, that occurs from the aspect of his side. Which she's in, meaning at the level before she's been differentiated, before she was taken away, when she exists within him, in the tzela, that is the most unified they were in their process of, of her creation. Because she was made from him. And now there are two bodies. That the, uh, um, the original one retains. Uh, it's for the zachar, for the male, and this new one is for the nekeva. Im heyot shegam bechinat nekeva haytaba. Even albeit that, even the bechina, the aspect of nekeva, was once in him. Kema amarenu besamuch, like we explained in the other piece. Kizek kiven hu yitbarach. The intent of God, blessed be He, was through this. Ki lemash ehim bechinat nefredot. Even though they are um, separate entities. One from the world of male, the cosmic uh, aspect of masculinity. And this from the world of the female, the cosmic aspect of femininity. And therefore, on the level of thought, they were created from the earth with an essence that was very slight, just on the level of thought. And in order that they should have uni- unity, ultimately, and also that the masculine should be the primary, um, uh, uh, yeah, the primary, and that she should follow him, and that she should be able, her being should be able to, to bring his potentiality to bear. Al came be maaseh. In the world of action, Haya Echad, they needed to be unified and they could be one. Kihina Chlalispo, because she's incorporated in him. The Al Kain, and therefore, Bihilakha Mimeno, in her being taken, removed, extracted from him, Yi Alahem, they should both have Achtut unity, Vitimashech Yacharav, and she should be um, uh, an extension following him. Okay? Vehain, Koza, Mahamar, Adam, Behamro, and all this, that this aforementioned, is all reflected in the words of Adam saying the, 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 in this verse, Zos hapam, this time. So now we're using all this con- to contextualize now the statement of Adam. What's he saying? Remember, what's he saying this time? Of course. And what's, if it's this time and it's unique, why is that al came always that a man right, will have to leave, etc., etc., which is not applicable at all to Adam's situation? So let's see. Hine zosapam, behold, this time, yesh yichud yoter ala pamakodemet. There is a greater, what he's really saying, he's flipping it on his head. There is a greater unification. Adam said, in this aspect of where you did surgery to remove a whole being, an entity of Chava, but she had to emerge from me, this time, greater than the previous um, stage, phase of existence that we had, meaning on the level of machshava. Meaning now I'm experiencing, remember, this is a phase 
three in his creation. There was the phase of Machshava, there was the phase of Dibor, and there was the phase of Maisa. On the phase of Machshava, there were two totally separate. And on the phase of Dibor, they were separate, but they were unified on the level of name. And now Hashem is actually giving her body from his body, Zotapan. This time, on the level of Etza Meatzamai, right? Uh, uh, and on the on basar mipsari, now we could say her identity is isha because in the level of deed, her uh, her whole identity is that that she's extracted oh, from. So it, when he says this time, he's talking it about is this, going this, back, this part right. of the development. In right. This part of exactly. the development. So let's contrast on the level of pshat. What was our and we thought. Oh, meaning this time in history, the first right. time woman is created as opposed to the following times. But he's saying, no, in the process of, of mm. Chavah coming into being, there's three phases, and this is the phase now that Adam says, this is the most manifesting of our ability uh -huh. to unify. Uh -huh. I think that's what he's going to say. Here, let's see. Okay? Zosapam, as opposed to Pama Kodemet. What's the previous time? The level of Machshava. She'alah b'machshava, that on the occurrence, meaning Hashem's, Rather, Hashem's intent on the level of thought, Livro Shnayim, to make two discrete, totally separate entities, independent, that on that level, masculine and feminine are two independent beings. However, Vinikru Adam, God still unified them by calling them Adam on the level of speech, Bibchinat Havayat Hamachshava, He asserted or projected an external unification on two separate individuals in thought on the level of speech, they're wrapped together. Right? That's still an external unification. Mm. Right? Ki ata, rather now, he, in the physical extraction, he et semi she is bone of my bone, ubasar mi psari. Previous to that, there wasn't real unification. Ki ayinu nikraim tchila shneinu adam. We were just called together adam. Al ki ayinu ani vihimi adama, because we were both um, separate thought entities that were invested in the nefesh of the Adama, like we explained on Yom Chamishi, right? We couldn't really fully unify in a complete unification. We were separated, even in the ingredients that we were invested in. Ah, that I don't understand. Oh, because we explained, if you recall, that where did Hashem take these two entities on the level of Machshava? Then He put it in the earth. You remember, yeah. like we discussed yeah. it. So they're now they're sharing space. They're 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 forced um, flatmates in the earth, and then what God is going to do is He's going to make a zakhar out of that, and then from that make a nekeva, and that's what allows them to. Meaning, He's talking about the basami psari when she's extracted from Him. It's that, right? It's the fact that they were both together that that allows them to be unified. But but until that point. They're just basically separate entities on the level of machshava that they happen to have been invested both in the koch of the adama, but so were the animals. The, meaning the adama, you remember, produced those three things. But I'm, I'm puzzled that he's saying that in the in in the form of machshava, yeah. we weren't as unified as we are now. Yeah, of course. That I don't understand because Why? now the physically is separated. So how can you say you're not as unified? Because our whole physical being only comes from your being. You both shared a physical being. On the level of thought, you never shared anything. God made thought of a zakhar and thought of it a keva separate. Ah, so you didn't have anything shared. Yeah, that's the whole point. The whole point ah. is in Machshava, they were completely discrete separate. entities. And then you have a They shared only started name. to share something. The name wraps around that, uh -huh. but it's still external. The fact that you both call them the same thing, there's an external identity that unifies them. But then that their physical being, their whole, ex their whole experience of reality on, on this physical level stems from a being that comes out of his being. That's what allows them to unify on the level of flesh. And truly, the most unification that male and female can have is in the area of flesh. Why? What is the flesh? It's not their, them, it's not the act of intimacy. Because if you look at the next Pasuk, it says, Vidavak ishto, he will cleave to his wife. That's the act of intimacy. And they will become one flesh. That's a child. Child, yes. The ability to create together that incorporates both, and that's really on this in this world where the most unification, where the achdut happens. But but anyway, so we're saying just on the level, right? It's why is he saying achapam in this phase three of the three phases of them coming into being, different stages being separate and then being together and then being separate again, so that they can ultimately come together in perfect unity to the degree that is best, that is most possible according to God's. A supernal wisdom, right? So they needed this phase where she's extracted from him, that she had to be 
in a body, remember we said, it's not just that they shared a body, it's that he was already Zachar without her being yet. So she experiences without a body being in his body, meaning they shared an experience of the same body and then she gets her own body. So that sharing allows them to cleave. And she has to be extracted from his body, not they're both extracted from the same, because she needs to feel that she came from him so that when she unites, she wants to go back to her source and facilitate, right? Her being is to actualize and facilitate the potential that he expresses, that he's primary and that her being and her meaning comes from actually uh, facilitating that. And why is that so crucial? Because the whole Adam, going back, is that to God? Adam itself is the Nekeva on behalf of the Bria to the potential of God that he invests. We're meant to actualize him. And we're Mevatel, so to speak, ourselves to his agenda. And our perfect coming into being and, and perfect expression is when we are, ex are expressing him. And that, in the Mashal, in humanity, so to speak, is that the, the Nekeva to the Zachar. Mm -hmm. and, this, and the whole species of Adam experiences that, so the whole species can be the Nekeva, so to speak, to God's Zachar. But that's, we didn't even get to that. That's the, Beautiful. But can yeah. I guess just yeah, clarify sure. the process right. of the creation? So you've got uh, two you. separate entities in thought. Yes. In, in this hovering, in this yeah. uh, Neshama of the, of the earth. Then God brings them together into a body. Mm -hmm. That's point two, if you like. Then he gives them the same name. No. Then it, no? No, no, no. Um, well, one second. I, I, right. I, I think the way I'm right thinking about it, because we usually name. arrange, it's machshava, yes. dibur, ma'aseh. Uh -huh. And there's an increasing level of unity. Right. So on the level of machshava, there's no yeah. unity. Right. On the level of dibur, which comes next, there's a level of unity, but it's external. It's a name. But, but you're suggesting that the, di that the name came before the body. Well, even if it didn't in actuality, which I, that's what I have to check, the reason why we describe it in order is because that's actually successive yes. levels of emanation. So yeah. on that level, yeah. even if it wasn't done in that order, that would be the reality that yeah. it represents. Yeah. But you're right. There, it may have been out of order, but still, since Machshava, Dibur, Maisa are in reality, are nested, uh, levels of gradation of emanation of reality. It's just a mitziut that on that level of reality, that's the level of unity, okay. right? Can we just check? Yeah, now? I'm checking right now. It would be on the sixth day. It would make sense that it would be like you're saying, just in terms of a creative process. Yeah. Some more, you create it and then you give it a name. Yeah. Right. The name is the last thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Because he is presenting it for obvious reasons, you know, the other way. So let's see. The question is, where does it even say that he called them Adam? Because even in the beginning it says Naase Adam. Na 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 he had an idea. It's already a name before there was a thing. Mm -hmm. Right? So where does it say that he called them Adam? It's by us, maybe. Let's yeah, look at no, it. It's, it's not in the na sixth na day. Adam. No, That's no, no. One second. Say. Right. But maybe it's... Maybe... Here, one second. That's uh, the acronym, yeah. That's right. Okay, one second. I don't know where it says it. I don't know if there's a direct, there's never a, a, a statement that God calls them Adam, but it's the fact that the Pasuk, that God refers to them as Adam, I think he's talking about. Here, let's, one second. The first time he mentions it is in the previous piece. When he mentions Rabbi Vo. Well, even here he said, yeah, 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 I just, Adam. Right, but it could be that there's a better, a different quote. Here, one second. That was the whole piece that we just, I would refer you to the video about what a name is. We talked about, I think you were here when we talked about Adam giving names to the animals. We talked about the significance of that, that it was um, on many levels, yeah. And we talked about, we talked about the creation of a consciousness 
conforming to the, a description of the facility of language and how the names of the Chumash themselves represent this process of relating to a, an ex, a reality and being able to engage with it, to have conversation and relationships starts with giving it names. Bereshis Shemos, Vayikra, you can call something once you give it names. Bamidbar is Bimidaber, you can have exchange back and forth, Devarim, right? The name becomes sentences, become paragraphs. We, t we talked about that. It, maybe you would uh, enjoy uh, finding it on the video. But there are some things that were created and we made later on. We make, we make ourselves, right? We make uh, human beings make new animals, right? I, I, I'm sorry, one second. I, there's a, I'm sorry, there's a couple things going on here, actually. It's not straight out, but first of all, first of all, I, I, I was wondering about this. It's in the Medrash itself, remember when we said about giving names? Yeah. So it says, and what should I call you? Right. So that Bechlal, that's just important, meaning that's, that, that is not what he's talking about. It says, you, in, when it says by the animals, Vechol Asher Yikare Lo Ha'adam, and all that, that it was, meaning when it talks about Adam giving names to the animals, it says all the names that Adam, that Adam gave to them, that, that, that was their name, they were Nefesh Chaya Hushimo. And we, you remember we said Nefesh Chaya is really talking about Adam, and I, I mean, you, I don't think he's doing this, but it says Asher Yikare Loha Adam, that because he's called Adam, that therefore every name that he gives, meaning that God called him Adam, that this is somehow captures Adam. That's, that would be a drash maybe, but I don't see anywhere where it says. I think he's saying, that you see from the fact that God relates to it. Look, I'll tell you, just tell you, Pasha, it's coming to me now. The first time he's called Adam is Nase Adam. Right. That means God That's has an idea. That's an it, thought. Process. Right, and he's calling it Adam. Right. There you have it. And, the, yeah, but, uh, the, 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 uh, and he named him Adam. Well, what, who was he referring to when he says Nase Adam? To an idea he already had. Right. So he's existing, you have Zachar and Akeva in the mind, and then God says, there's Dibor, and he's saying, hey guys, let's now incorporate Nase Adam. He just called the, that idea Adam. And it referred to both the Zachar and Akeva that pre previously existed. And you could just learn like that. It's very Pashut, it works out nicely. So the, what he's calling it is the first time he ever mentioned, he's referring in the Chumash, he calls it Adam, he's referring to both the Zachar and Akeva that called <coughs> right. the that's, that's what he's saying. I'm sorry, I'm slow today, I just had to work that's it right, out. Right, right. So I just want to um, just uh, reiterate, just so we're okay. There's three stages here. Yeah. There is the level of thought where they exist independently. Then God's naming of them, he refers to both the same name. So that's the level of unification on the level right. of speech. And, and here separate. specifically, this whole funny thing that he chose to make it first, a body of a zakhar with the spirit of Chava somehow sandwiched somewhere in a corner and then to extract that and give her her own form and also that she experiences her being before she has, remember the way we describe Adam, it's like he only woke up after God breathed life into him and he had a body already. This is reversed. She's an existent, she's ex as an awareness, a consciousness and she has to be, her body is being formed. We talked about that maybe mirroring the experience of, of woman to her physical being as opposed to right the level of consciousness of man, how he relates to his body. So that particular whole deal that's the most unifying stage where Adam is responding to that. And therefore the Asha HaKadosh is saying, don't say Achapam as opposed to subsequent times in humanity that Adam is saying just this time. Meaning this phase, this last phase of a process that started with Machshava and went through Dibor and now I'm experiencing it in the Isha getting her, her being in Olam Hamasa. This is what makes her makes it possible for me to uni unify with her to the ultimate degree that I can name her a name vis-a-vis -vis our relationship. So I'm an Ish and she's an Isha because she came from me. But it's true to say that as we go through the process of Machshava, naming and separating, that each of those play stages we're getting a greater stage of unification. This, there's on, mm, there's, this is only relevant when the machshava starts off with two things that need to be unified that are ultimately... You don't have this all the time with all the machshava dibur. Uh, usually, the successive phases of machshava dibur maisa, which is also over here, are successive levels of emanation, meaning they become more and more manifest right. from potential to actual. Here, in tandem with that, since this is a creation of something that's ultimately meant to be something unified that's ultimately from two pieces, it's a whole tricky thing. So it's that they, on the level of thought, they may have a very different level of unity than ultimately where we're supposed to get to. You know, it's so interesting because this whole journey 
is it's not something that starts off together unified at a point that separates and it has to be brought back together again. It's not like the vision of the two-sided Adam that we were talking yeah. about. This is that things are fundamentally, even their peers, they're, they actually the compete opposite. with each other. They yeah. both exist in the same form, but they're independent and there is no unity that way, right. which means they start off in Contra and successively, as we get more and more to the world down here, they become more and more able to unify, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting way well, of thinking about of, men and there women. There is a bit of unity because they're sharing, they, they have different consciousness, but they're sharing the same uh, Ruach of the, being in the Eret, in the Adama. No, on the level of thought. On the level Even at the level of thought. Even at the level of thought, That's are they not in, he invested their, their, their spirituality in the no, earth? It, no, they, because there's two, if anything, it undermines each other. Because if, you're two, if there are two things in the same domain, but there's nothing unifying them, that's competition. Right. They can only see themselves, and yet there's something that stands in their way that's, that's independent of them, that's the same thing. There is no, if there, there, there's no, that's total pirda. That's right. a problem. And it's fascinating that ultimately men and women go back to that. That is our root. I'll give you a contra to that. We say that Torah and Yisrael, cosmically, no matter how separated they are in, the, in a physical world, they have to unify, but they all come from, they, they come from the same root. The same Yisrael, Shorish in, 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 cosmically of Yisrael, and Torah the same. The land, no, of Yisrael, the people. Yis, yeah, you're the people and the Torah itself, the supernal Torah are the same. So that there's, we say, the way we say it in Chazal is, it's not even clear. Did God create the Torah for Yisrael or Yisrael for the Torah? Did God have this Torah and he created the whole Mitziut so there should be someone to keep the Torah? And that ability for, is called Yisrael? Or is it that God wanted to have a Yisrael, and the only way to relate to Yisrael, he has the, is, which is the means and which is, we don't even know, because ultimately we say Yisrael ve'araisa ve'kutsha b'richu chadhu. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we're, we're, but here by man and woman, in terms of cosmic male and female, there's already, already a built-in independent huge gap. They hmm. exist. And now it's like, ultimately reality is made by successive emanations of them being able to come together to create one reality down here and partner. Mm -hmm. But the gap is never the twain shall meet. Like God and creation, there's never on the level of mitzvot. They're two totally separate things, mm -hmm. and yet all of reality is made up of them being able to unify all the way down on the lowest level. It's interesting, even the process today of unifying the unification of the male and female yeah. starts with a, an idea, the machshava. I would like to have a mate, and then you start with dibur to get to know the person, and then finally you have the marriage, which is the physical. It's also marry, uh, mirroring the same root. To the final unification. All, all things in, in this world conform to those successive stages. Everything that comes into being goes from the most ethereal level of potential all the way to the actual, and it goes through Machshavah mm -hmm. Maisa. I think by us, it's actually, we, the way the Gemara talks about it, subsequent joining of the Shidduchim are not like this, because the male and female that come together, they start off in different bodies, but you are hewn from the same Nisham. Meaning your neshama's tikkun already gets split up into a zachar aspect and a, and a, and a um, nekeva aspect. It's not like you and your mate as two individuals existing in God's mind independently. You're actually made for each other. It's, a little, it's different. It's like almost reversed from Adam and Chava. Adam and Chava on the level of thought existed separately. <coughs> in, in my soul, I was supposedly, right, the way we see it, the, my soul only came, like we said uh, last time, that 40 days before they proclaim even my conception, when, God, when God's going to put my soul, invest my soul into the world, he already has to allot for me the fem female version uh, that's, that's meant for me to be able to, be, um, to fulfill my tikkun down here. So on the level of soul, we actually, so there's so many stories in Hasidut, if you'll indulge me for a second. Please. A famous story, there are various versions of it, of the great Divrei Chaim from Tzans, Schuto Yagen Elena, the Tzans Arof, that um, he was a, a prodigy, when he was young, and um, he made such an impact on his future father-in-law. He, he was one of the Gedole Olam, the Baruch Tam. The Baruch Tam met him and um, was th blown away by him. And right then and there, arranged to marry off his daughter to him. And when the time came for him finally, to, for the Chassan to meet the Kala after they were going to celebrate, meaning she never saw him, she just heard that he was a wonderful, she met him. And unfortunately, he had a problem that he had, um, he had a problem with one of his legs that he was, um, I don't know if it was, he, he dragged it around, he was, it was, there, there was a problem with one of his legs. Mm. 
So she was very, very struck by that at the when they finally met and they're celebrating the engagement, and she was very, very upset. And she could he had a problem with one of his legs. I, I, once he was malformed or he was limp, meaning he wasn't totally functional. It was hard for him to walk, right? and it really bothered her. And she was unconsolable. And he asked, according to the, the the this version, the most commonly told of version, he asked if he could have a moment with her to calm her down. A moment with her to calm her down. The story goes that he took her to a private corner of the room where there was a mirror, and he asked her to look in the mirror, and she saw in the reflection that he had a perfect, he, he was fine, and she had that moon. Hmm. And he said, I just want to let you know that in Shemayim, you were supposed to have this. Hmm. And because we're, we're bashert, I said, you know what, she doesn't need, I'll take it upon myself. Hmm. Well, he really knew how to talk to her. Huh? <laughs> she, she, Do you believe that story? Do I believe that story? I believe absolutely that, that, that uh, first of all, people tell over that story. So I have no reason to believe that, that he didn't tell her that. Um, I don't know what she saw, if I would have seen the same thing when I looked in the mirror, but that's moot. But the, the idea in the story, aside from the fact that he really knew how to handle the situation, was this idea that when shidduchim, if they're true, if they're meaning on the level of bashat that they're supposed to be, that there's, you know, that they're already, you're, you're, you're one soul in a way. Whereas this, it's not, it's not um, presented like that here at all. No. It's the so opposite. So you're saying that, the, that this is a complete contrast to mm -hmm. when Adam and Chava, mm -hmm. they were two separate souls. Meaning they only, right. And there it's like we start off one and then we come down as two separate bodies. We have to find each other. So, you know, it's interesting in the, in the, in the Midrashim, in Bereshit's Rav, there's some beautiful and sometimes humorous Midrashim that talk about the difference between the nature of man and woman and how they're reflected in this particular um, story. Um, to the point where why it says men don't wear makeup and women have a predilection to wearing makeup. What do you say? Men don't, um, they don't put rouge on or mascara on, they, right? Hopefully. Awesome. Right, but women do, meaning the Medrash notes that it's in their nature and it ties it back to these kinds of, it's very interesting. I would refer you to that, but the point is here, we're hanging because that just, this now, this idea addressed the first part of the statement and the, our first question. But remember, we still have to talk about if all this, once we understand what the significance of achapam, mm -hmm. this time that he's talking about, why does that directly then um, become, therefore a man must leave? That right. We said that didn't right. follow. Okay, right. so let's, let's address yeah. that. Adam was created backwards. Adam was created with the Hava. The Gemara says, the Gemara has a word called du partsufi double-faced. And that's one of the ways in the Gemara Sanhedrin and Brachos, they talk about, they explain, basically, just basically, there's two instances in the Chumash that talk about Adam and Chava. The first one is in the first part of the story of the six days, and it talks about Adam and Chava differently than the story here, which is after the, the Torah talks about Shabbos, it goes back and it talks about the story of Hashem making the Adam completely differently. And in the first story, it just seems that there was an Adam and a Chava. And in the second story, we talk about how Hashem extracted Chava from Adam. That there's a whole story, he went to sleep, there was a surgery, right? So, so the, 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 the Misora wants to reconcile why it's, it talks about it in one way, in the, in the first story and the other way, right? So one of the, the main, uh, I'm sorry, the most simple approach, the Gemara says that in the first story, they were, they were back to back. It was one Adam, there was, it was Adam and Chava, and they were joined back to back. And this story is where, Hashem, and that was Adam. And in this story, Hashem basically cut them, the, what's the tzela, the side? It means he split them in half and turned them to each other, and now they could look at each other, Gavalik. So that's, that's, that's the du partsufi. But we're not going with that here. It's a, it's a different approach. Who led? Well, it was, you know, that, the problem is that nobody led. Led? Who led? That nobody led. They both just... How did they walk? They didn't. They stood in one place? There, you, there was a... Uh, there was a, I don't know if you're familiar with the child's um, uh, television show, Sesame Street. What? Sesame Street, there was, a, there was a puppet show, educational show for children, where one of the characters was this two-headed monster. And he was, uh, it was basically, it was a Siamese twin. And they could never go anywhere because they were all, always just trying to go in the opposite direction. And mm -hmm. it was a character that was employed to teach a child about cooperation, about how, you know, like, and, and it's really this story. So, so the question, who led? In that kind of situation, you can't lead. When well, both people, when both sides are trying to lead, you, nobody leads. Well, okay. Right. 
We're, we're up to Ach Ata. Amitz. Oh, in the middle of the paragraph. Okay. Ach, however, Ata, now, Amitz Hine Kesher Yichud Shebeino Leveina. There is a very, very strong uh, bond or tie be, uh, of unity between him and her. Ve'atamu, and the reason is, Ki lazosi kare Isha, for this, because she was extracted from him, she will be called Isha. She was only extracted from me after I was already an ish. Mm. Right? Like we said, he was already a male. It wasn't that they were in the same um, uh, lump of matter, then they were both separated and both fashioned. He was a complete male mm. with a complete body and a complete presence, and her um, essence was was localized inside of him. So only after he became an ish, otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't be this experience, it wouldn't work. Kilomar, that is to say, ve'alkein, and therefore, hetiv asher asahu yitbarach, it was very, very uh, benevolent and good, uh, that which, uh, God bless it be, he did, levilti asos hamaisa kemachshava, that he did not do the deed like in thought. Liyot gam he may offer, that he would have fashioned her directly from a separate, separately from the dirt. Ki imshe, Call out Ota B, that he included her in me, the Chazar, and then uh, returned the Lakhamimani and extracted her from me. Vizel Amra, and that's what the verse says, Lezos, because of this, Yikare Isha, and that's what makes her, that's what makes her an ability to connect to me. It's the Isha to the Ish because of this idea. Shelo Naaset Ad Hayoti Ish, she wasn't made until I was an Ish. Vizel Kime Ish, from an Ish she was taken. Beautiful. Okay, so that's clear. Now, we still didn't address this. this, this yeah. the, okay. But he's not done because he... Okay. Oh, Yoma. Alternatively. Im me'afari If he would have taken from... Let's say Hashem would have taken uh, dirt or reserved to be made for man. And from that, he would have taken, meaning without him being fully formed yet. Im mm me'afari. -hmm. If from my dirt, hayanotel me'ati. would take a little bit. Uboreota and create her. It would not have shown any sort of unification. She's not called dirt because she's also taken from the dirt. She's called dirt because she's taken from Adam. Ki Adama hu shem haaretz. Adama is really referring to the aretz. Ah, however, ata now shelukcha miish. She's not taken from the Adama. She's taken from man. Hashem yore achdut. The name itself shows, um, meaning it's not just that. She was, uh, uh, he's bringing out just another more subtler aspect of the same idea, that it's even reflected in the name. More subtle, there's no word more subtle. <laughs> Thank you, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. Maybe in okay. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So he's saying that basically if, if, was, if he wasn't created into an ish first, she would have been called Adama. Right, with the right. Or, uh, no, she would have also been called Adam because she's, meaning you don't say that you could have said, called her Adam because she's taken from Adam, because that would have just meant that she's taken from Adama, and that wouldn't have made, created a unification. But on the level of Isha, it's not just that she's taken from Adam, she's taken from the, the Adam who's an Ish, who's a Zachar. And that's, meaning that allows the feminine to connect to the masculine because it's on the level of Isha and Isha, not on the level of Adama, which would have been more also independent. Okay? Oh, Yomar. I mean, it's just, these are um, other points Different. to flesh out that particular aspect before we address the al -Kain. Okay, O Yomar, alternatively, B'masha Katavnu, regarding what we already wrote, Ki lo hatsela b'li nefesh v'nafach b'aneshama. It's not that Hashem removed the side from Adam as an inanimate uh, piece of flesh and then breathed uh, nefesh, or, uh, I'm sorry, and then breathed a neshama into it. Ki im, but rather, shenafsha haitabo, her nefesh already existed in it, bekoach, on the level of potential, vatavo, tochatzela, and it was placed, invested within that localized part of Adam's guf. Alze, on this, amar, the verse says, im haya hatzela, I'm sorry, on this it, it is said, im haya hatzela kevasar basada, if the side that ultimately was used to fashion her body was just like a piece of flesh found in the field. And her creation was from a, an, a, a bone that was inanimate. It would, that would not have been enough. Just because she's made from ingredients that existed within him does not make her Isha. It's the fact that she was already also in him. 
Meaning, if it would have just been a, a, a a piece of him that's inanimate, and then God would have invested her presence into him, that would have defeated the whole significance of the thing. It had to have been that she existed formless within him first, and that's what's being extracted in the tzela, right? Lo hayaruya, if that was the case, if she was just um, afterwards placed into an inanimate piece that was resu- um, removed from me, Lo hayaruya, it would not have been worth, she would, that would not have been worthy, Tikare Isha, to be called an Isha, al shahaya me'etzem shali, just because she was from my bone, ki acha shanase, ever mace, after it became a dead piece of me, a dead limb, lo yikare shame, you can't call on that, a, ne, a shame hakol, al chelek chomer mace. From the dead part of her, you're going to call her, all of her, her identity? That doesn't make sense. Ah, however, regarding that for this she should be called Isha, who al ki halomi ish lukachazo, because she was taken from ish. She was in there when I was, when I was already formed as an ish. Kilomar, that is to say, kishenital hatzela mimeni, when my side was removed from me, lo tzela bilvad, it wasn't just my, the side of flesh, nital, that was taken, ki im hi atzmalukha, her essence was invested in there, that's what was removed from me. He birthed her. Ki bemitziut, in, in essence, in actuality, Haita Sham, she was there, Bikoach, in potential, Ba'atzmi'i, in her independent essence, Kim Dubar, like it has it's, been explained. It's almost like a birth. Yeah. It's almost like but a birth. But no, it's not a birth because she, in a birth, the woman's whole idea, she is the birthing machine. Meaning, it's more like he was a shared space and then he was extra. Meaning, it's not him that produces her. Mm-hmm. She's not, she, he doesn't birth her. Hashem did surgery. Hashem right. birthed her. Right. But I'm just saying on the level that they were, there was undifferentiated, even there was differentiated oneness, there was unity. Just like the process where, you know, like there's an identity shared, a bond between mother and child because the child came into being within him, her. She also, because she facilitates it. He didn't facilitate it. But the fact that she was incorporated in him and then came, that's what creates that feeling of unity and that bond. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying it's the same thing, uh, same as birth in, in that you have two independent consciousness sharing one body effectively. That's what I'm trying to say, right. But yeah. in terms of him, he's, there's nothing about him that's bringing her into being. No, yeah. no, God does, do, right, God does right. the birthing, yeah, absolutely. the process. And that's what makes her unique also, feminine, that she births, he can never birth. Right. Men, right. But the process is similar. There, there's this aspect uh, that allows, meaning the bond is because they do share being on right. a physical level. Right. Some, right. So, so do you, would it be correct to say that the bond between Adam and Chava is the same between a bond between a mother and a child today? No, it's not the same bond, but um, what, it's, it's just like what facilitates uh, an aspect of the bond with mother and child is that they share physical being. That's on the level of Adam Marishan over here, what allows for their unity, the bond, whatever that bond is, even though the characteristic in nature is different, it would, it's, it's only possible because they shared, on some level, they shared a physical uh, being. Hmm. But isn't in, that, in terms isn't of formation, the same thing as no, mother and no, mother that's what child. I'm saying. There's a whole other aspect that that we don't have here, and that's the birthing, because she's her bond to the child is also that her meaning the, the baby, the fetus is being created from her. Right. God is created, created from it, and she the meaning there's a much deeper level of unity and also experience of that thing coming into being from her that we don't have by Adam and Chava. So, so you're saying because the then he would be her mother, and that would totally that doesn't make any sense. That's all fem, female. Meaning, in this act, you can't say that he. Sh- I mean, there's no female aspect about this. I mean, what specifically? Right. That's there's. It's very important. Just you know, it's a little, maybe a little subtle. You can you can explore it, but the the birthing part is not here. It's just the aspect that just like meaning at some point they share a physical bond. Well, and one you, is extracted. You could say from the that other. with a, a section C. Birth. It's, it's very similar. I, I, I don't know. Why, no, why that's what I'm saying. It? Because the fetus is created from within the... From, meaning, she doesn't start off with independent children that are not her, that are ultimately removed. The whole create... I mean, on some level, yeah, that's the, that's the insemination. But, but her, her flesh itself is creating the flesh of the fetus inside right. and the kohot, meaning she's constantly investing. She has a whole avoda where she is feeding. The life is being made very much from her. She's a country, she's a partner with Hashem in that. Adam Marishan does not have that. Adam Marishan is just, uh, at some point he was, a, he was housing for her so that, so that when she's extracted, there's, uh, there's a feeling of disconnect of something that rightfully should be connected, that's all. There's not that level, he's not. But, but you're suggesting that the, the mother-child connection is stronger than much, the, yeah, absolutely, than much deeper than the yeah. Adam, yeah, Chava. yeah, yeah, 
See, you know, Adam can love his wife in a way that she can't love him, but she can love her child in that way. Say it again. A woman does not have the feeling of her, of the Isha coming from, the Ish, her Ish coming from him. She's not bound, meaning you can, a woman cannot separate on some level, there, she, there's no need to separate. She's, she's bound to her children in, a, in a, an essential way, that, that they're an extension of her. Right. She never has that with her husband. She's an extension of the husband. Right, so he feels that about her in a way that she can't feel. What she feels about her kids, he feels about her. She can't feel that uh, way about him. Uh. You know, there's a joke. It's a little, I don't know if there's under a century, it's a little negative, but like, um, there's no res reciprocity. Men love women, women love children, children love hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> hamsters, meaning you're always like, it's, you're looking outwards to the next thing. You don't, yeah. look, you know, but the idea is that a woman should look to her husband and the child should look to the parents. That's a vision of Torah, that we're looking at our source. It's panim bepanim. We're looking to God. Right, right. That's why in just you know so many halachas reflect in terms of intimacy that you know, like that uh, that there's giving and receiving face to face. You know, that's uh, that we look to our source. So, and that, but but our feeling of unity doesn't come. From, meaning that's a feeling I feel about something that came from me. A child doesn't feel. A child has no clue as to the unity of their parents, like their parents feel with them. It's the same thing. It's like that idea. What, when you're extracted from your experience, starts from there. Mm. But that's why she needed to be aware within man. Otherwise, mm. it wouldn't have been something unified. You mean if she wasn't conscious, she wouldn't want to come I back don't know to how, the source? Right, I don't know how conscious, we, I don't know if mom is conscious, but that she had to be, her essence had to be already pre-existent within him. She had to be alive and uh, present on the most important levels. She, she was, right? It was just a, a physical, the last stage of, of agency in a physical world, last stage of emanation that she didn't have. And only on the last stage she, she experienced, okay. Very fascinating. I did, yeah. I, did, I did describe last week's shear as being the fact that she had consciousness during the process of her creation and he didn't. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, on some level, yeah. I'm just saying in absolute when we talk about consciousness, I don't know if she was really right. But yeah, absolutely. We talked about that, right. Um, okay, so we, I think we should pause yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make a note. Uh, borrow your pencil afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay. Baruch Hashem, Amen, Amen.